Welcome everyone. I'm Zen Honeycutt of Moms Across America. We're so excited to have you on our Monday Night Moms Connect call. This is October 19th, 2020. And Moms Across America's mission is to educate and empower mothers and others with actions and solutions to create healthy communities. And we do our Monday night calls uh, almost every Monday, but there's been a delay because we've been driving cross country and going to Austin and New Orleans and Atlanta. In Atlanta, I got to stop and see Dr. Eric Plasker, who is our dad champion or dad chiropractor champion. Hi, Dr. Plasker. Hey, Zen and everybody else. Great to be with you. I'm seeing some of our people who are learning about what we're doing starting to show up like Janet and uh, Ron Hosek, a researcher at Life University, and I'm sure there'll be others. This is our first time together. It's great to be with you guys. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Plasker, for joining us on this call tonight and all of your colleagues as well. At Moms Across America, we are super committed to offering, as I said, actions and solutions to create healthy communities. We've been very focused on food, 5G, and health freedom, particularly vaccines. Now, what I learned uh, throughout this whole process of learning more about chiropractic care is, is that it's sort of like, I mean, for me, this is my analogy. I just made this up, Dr. Plasker. I hope this floats with you. Uh, so it's sort of like if you have a, a pinball machine and let's say that the body of the pinball machine is keeping the 5G out and the pinball itself is organic food, right? And, and you've got this really good pinball machine and you pull back the springs and you let the ball go and it hits all this stuff, but nothing goes off. And that's because your electricity is not on. And if you don't have your, your nervous system lined up and with all the nerves out, able to go out and, and hit on, oh, we just lost Dr. Plasker. <laughs> he's, he's missing this analogy. Maybe somebody, maybe um, Ronald can, can, uh, can uh, chime in for me. But if you don't have your electricity on and your nerves able to connect to all of those different spots, then those bells are not gonna go off. The pinball machine's not gonna work the way it's supposed to. Ron, would you, Ronald, would you say that that's a pretty fair analogy? You gotta unmute yourself. Yeah, I had to unmute myself. It's an interesting analogy and I'd say it's fairly fair, yes. Something like that, okay, good. So uh, we, we're gonna have Dr. Plasker on tonight as soon as he comes, joins back on uh, to talk to us about chiropractic care and some really huge benefits that are connected with it. There he and is. Great, thank you, Hi, Dr. Plasker. I was just finishing up my analogy that if the if the, the, all those different spots on the pinball machine don't go off, that's because your nerve, it's like you're not having your nervous system connected to them, right? The electricity is not on, the nerves aren't able to communicate with them and all the lights don't go off and you don't really score. So we wanna make sure people can score in life and, uh, and the lights to go off and everything to be working. And so we wanna talk more about chiropractor care tonight. Does that make sense, Dr. Did, did I make a- I heard the last part of it. I heard pinball, I heard lights and it's all about lights, bright lights. We, <laughs> yes. In fact, my mentor used to say, we, we turn uh, dull into bright light bulbs. <laughs> yes, yeah, your nervous system basically connecting with everything, your liver and your heart and your, your intestines and allowing everything to work properly. So we're gonna talk more about that tonight. But cool. first, I do have some news to touch on. Uh, we do use these calls to connect people. Um, I mean, just to sort of uh, bring people up to speed with some things that are going on. And um, so I have some issues that I want to address. The first one I wanna bring everybody's attention to, because we, we, we talk a lot about food, eating organic food and keeping those toxins out of your body. We talk about uh, vaccines and health freedom and then also 5G. So I wanna address three things uh, quickly and then we'll get to Dr. Plasker and talk more about the immune system as I promised. So let me just share one of my screens right now. Right now we have a campaign going on, going on called Get Immune System Destroying Chemicals Out of Our Food Supply. There is an amazing bill that's been presented. It was a couple of weeks ago called Protect America's Children from Toxic Pesticides Act. This was put forth by Udall in, uh, I don't know if I'm saying this right, Nagoose. And uh, they're a senator and a representative, so in the House and in the Senate, both sides. And this bill eliminates about 90% of the major offenders from our food supply. It is, it is like astronomically like ama amazing. And uh, the fact that these senators recognize the danger of these pesticides and are taking action is huge. Now we know in this current climate, not, this is not going to be passed, right? In this current climate. 
However, we want to, we don't want to let it die. We don't want it just to sit in the back burner and not have attention raised awareness around it. And we think in this current climate, considering that immune systems are a huge issue, that this is, it, it, we need to continue to press forward and raise awareness to it. So we have these seven major points in here. You can go back and look at this article, how uh, important it is. I mean, farm workers, safety, uh, closes loopholes and emergency exemptions regulations. Basically, they used to be able to say, oh, there's no other pesticide like this. So we need to pass it without any safety testing. Over 60% of the chemicals are like that. No, never had any safety testing and they're approved uh, because there's nothing else like it. And they're able to be used on our food with absolutely no safety testing. And year after year after year, they say, this is, this is a, an important pesticide with nothing else like it. And so we have food on our, I mean, we have chemicals on our food that have not been safety tested or approved at all. So I want, I'd like everybody to go to Moms Across America, go to the blog, it doesn't have to be right now, but please bring it up on your browser and click here to take action later and sign our, um, our campaign. You can, you will be able to be uh, called by, you'll hear a message from me. If you put your phone number in and your address, then you'll be called and connected to the Senator's offices and representative's office. So you wanna do it during the daytime. And then you'll be able to talk to a Senator or representative staffer. And we have all the information there that you can tell them uh, that you want them to co-sign the bill. Okay, co be co-signers. Then after the elections, um, you know, we'll see what happens. Maybe this can move forward and, and maybe not. We'll see, but we need to bring attention to it. So that is, uh, that's very important. Now I'm, I'm switching screens. Can you see what I switch screens to? Can you see more Danner now? Yes. Yes, you can. Okay, okay, just want to make sure it can see. Okay, so the next issue is um, the fact that the COVID vaccine is going forward, right? And Moderna, even though in the second phase, 100% of the trial subjects uh, re experienced symptoms, side, of, side effects, uh, harmful side effects, it went on to phase three. And in phase three, they are again reporting COVID-like symptoms. So we wanna keep our eye on this COVID vaccine um, because some states are start, starting to talk about mandating it. That's specifically Washington state and Virginia. And we think this would be massively de detrimental to the public's health. And now is the time to be communicating to your representative and your senators about the harmful effects and how, why it should not be mandated. And I want you, everybody to keep in mind that the people that are being allowed to be a part of these trials are very healthy people. They're people with like, 6% body fat and have had less than four sexual partners. They don't drink and they don't smoke. I mean, they're basically like the Avengers, right? These, these are very healthy people. And so if they're having 100% of them are having side effects and many of them are having COVID-like symptoms, then what's gonna happen to people that have autoimmune issues like my children or myself or other people that have diabetes or obesity or children, right? What's, or elderly people, what's gonna happen to them? So we're very concerned about that. And unfortunately, Pfizer wants children to use children in the COVID-19 vaccine clinical trial. So that's not okay with us. And if you haven't heard, uh, Johnson & Johnson also had uh, adverse effects in their um, vaccine trial. And it was, somebody helped me out with the name of it, um, myelitis, um, something to do with this. Transverse myelitis. Transverse myelitis, thank you very much, Anne. Um, it's basically when the spine is damaged. <clears throat> That's permanent. That can be a permanent condition. Although maybe a chiropractor would disagree with me, but um, you know maybe that could be treated. But in the, the cases that I have heard about that, that can lead to paralysis. And um, unfortunately, when it happens to teenagers, far too many of them commit suicide because their their lives are just um, you know destroyed. They're they're in a, a, a wheelchair for the rest of their lives. So we are extremely concerned about uh, these, the COVID vaccine moving forward. And we ask everybody to, to please begin the process of finding out who your representatives and senators are, send them an email, ask them if you can have a conversation with them. And if you need some reasons why they should not vaccinate, uh, I'm sorry, they should not mandate the COVID vaccine, we are coming up with a campaign on that. We will have the top 10 reasons why governors should not mandate the um, the COVID vaccine. And if you want to use one of our articles, if you go to blog and if you, I'll just do it right now. So you can see, if you scroll down here, you can, um, you can go to Professor Hotez 
article and I have some really good reasons there. There's, I think about 13 of them. And here, letter to Professor Hotez on vaccine education. You can see this letter has been um, used by many people to send to their senators and representatives. And I've got a whole bunch of reasons here. So you can, in the meantime, if you want, if you're motivated to do this like tomorrow, you can go ahead and start using those reasons. Okay, and the last thing I want to mention is, I don't have a, anything to share about this, but I was just on a call tonight with a, a lawyer named Ariel Strauss and all about 5G. And what I wanna to convey to a lot of you who are trying to stop and 5G smart city grids. And when I say 5G, I wanna be very clear. I don't mean the upgraded 4G by T-Mobile that they're saying, oh, 5G, right? It's on your cell phone, it's in the hotels, it's you know, in all our cities. And they show that pink you know, spraying of like 5G all over the seas. I'm not talking about that. That is, that is simply an upgraded 4G. You can have a tower five miles away and you can have that so-called 5G, okay? This is a, a tactical um, strategy to confuse people. What the real 5G is the 5G millimeter waves. They are different waves, they are shorter, and they're putting up five, uh, they're putting up these 5G small cell facilities. They're just a long tube, like just a straight tube. It's like a giant straw that's outside 30 foot tall. It's not the macro towers with all the different like fan. Uh, those are macro towers, okay? That's for regular cell towers. The long tubes are small cell facilities. That is the 5G smart city network. That's so that your cars can talk to your phones, which can talk to your refrigerator, which can talk to your TV, that can talk to your coffee maker. They're creating a grid all over cities. And in Dallas, for instance, they have 96, 966 of these small cell facilities. And this grid will all talk to each other so that it can remind you in your car, from your car or your phone that you forgot to pick up your prescription at Walmart and where to turn right or when to get milk from Walgreens, right? So it's a smart city grid that we're talking about. And Dr. Um, Ariel Strauss, I mean, sorry, lawyer Ariel Strauss talked tonight about how you can use the American Disability Act and the Fair Housing Act to actually combat having a 5G small cell facility put up outside of your home. And we'll be doing more, uh, doing an article on this and how you can utilize this. Uh, but if, you, if you're interested between now and when we get this next article up, uh, please do just do some uh, internet searching. It's searching on uh, We Are the Evidence or Children's Health Defense 5G Crisis or Americans for Responsible Technology. Those are four websites that have an amazing amount of technology uh, that will talk about the American Disability Act and the Fair Housing Act and how if you have a disability, you can actually tell your city council, I, I cannot live in my house. It's not fair to me to have the cell, you know, cell tower outside of my house um, radiating me with harmful rays. Um, I need you to accommodate me and they must listen to you and they must have a, engage in a meaningful conversation with you about that. They don't have to turn it off, but there is a good chance that they may turn it off, especially if you have a medical doctor to support you in that decision. So I just wanted to let you know that we are um, continuing the conversations with lawyers and with specialists across the country. We will be bringing you this information. You can also research it and uh, look up the, the harmful effects of 5G and the, the problem with this smart 5G smart city, uh, sorry, yeah, smart city grids is the close proximity of these small cell facilities. They could be as close as six feet outside your house. And people are experiencing nosebleeds, headaches, um, you know, all kinds of problems within a couple of days and uh, have to move out of their home. So if you are experiencing that, you are definitely somebody who has electromagnetic sensitivity, which is increasing our population. And, um, and, and should definitely go to We Are the Evidence and some of those websites I just mentioned to research more how you can stop that. So, okay, any, anybody have any questions about that before we move, move on, any of those issues or comments? Not right now, okay, great. Yeah, and, I have a question. Yeah, sure. Uh, how are they determining where to put these sites? That's an excellent question. Uh, they usually have to apply for a permit, like in California, they, they struck down the ruling that they could just put them up wherever they want. So they have to apply for a permit through your city commissioner. And the, they tell the city commissioner where they want to put them. And um, if they don't get too much opposition, they'll be allowed to go ahead and put them there. 
sometimes they, when people are, speak up. Mm -hmm. Are they disguised or will you know it's there when it's there? You usually will know it's there, but they're getting better with, for instance, in my old city that I lived in, Mission Viejo, they have lamp posts with like a curly Q thing on it and a, and a bell and then a light. They're going to just put them on top of those light posts. They're going to put like a cone right on top. So unless you are know to look for that, you won't really know it's there. But they're normally they're a long tube. It's like, a, like I said, like a giant straw. And it could be beige, it could be green. It's it's usually right. like a cement color, yeah. And okay. yeah, and they'll usually be, they could be six feet or 30 feet away from your house. It depends on your ordinance. And they could be as close as 500 feet together. They could be on every street post, which is what they're doing in San Francisco. But the actual antenna itself, how long is that? Is it um, it's a 30 foot pole. 30 foot pole and the antenna part at the top, I would say is probably about two feet. Just that part is at the top of the pole. And um, the important thing to note is that the ordinance is law. And a lot of city council members are not taking advantage of that. They're not saying we want to, for instance, we will recognize the American Disability Act and the Fair Housing Act, and we will accommodate people. And the cities that have done that look like too much of a pain in the butt to telecom. So they go somewhere else, right? or we will acknowledge that there needs to be a gap in coverage. They need to prove a gap in coverage and not just put these things up all over the place. And so the cities that put those type of parameters into their ordinance can actually occur as too much of a pain in the butt to telecom and they'll go somewhere else. The thing is you need to communicate with your city council members and, 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 and really uh, you know, convince them that they can put this in their ordinance. And thank you, okay, and yes, you very good example. Yes, yeah, so that, that it, and they all look different. You know, they can design them differently for different cities. So yeah, so having conversations with your city commissioners is very important about uh, the protecting citizens. Some places like Elk Grove, uh, Mark Graham that was on one of our calls before shared how they were able to get a setback from residences of 500 feet. So that's been excellent for them, right? I prefer not in the city at all, but I was right. unsuccessful in Mission Viejo and in doing that, they're going to put them up all over the place. Then Susie so. Corgan raised her hand. Sure, Susie, what, what, do, what, do, what kind of question do you have? Yeah, Zen, well, I just wanted to thank you for one thing for bringing up the legislation about COVID-19 vaccine for Washington State. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe you guys could put out a call to action um, publicly. Is that what you're saying you're going to do? Because Yes. Uh, people, people are thinking that because we are not currently in legislative session, we don't start until January, that they don't need to contact their legislators, but that's oh. going to be too late because the legislation right. is being drafted now. So if you right. could do something like that with your reach, I would really appreciate it. Yes, that, that is the next thing on our list. We have the PACTPA thing out right now, and we were hoping to get the, the COVID one out. I don't know, though. Next next week is election week, isn't it? Isn't next Early. week? Oh, two, two weeks. weeks. Okay, all right. So maybe we can do it next week then. Before um, it's, I know it's super important, and uh, Virginia is talking about it now too. So we've we've got yeah, to get the word out with, to governors why yeah, they can't. Yeah, I was on a call with Virginia yeah. today, and it's pretty Great. pressing for both our states. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll do that as soon as we can. Okay, well, um, keeping then, in mind that yes, John. Oh, hi, John Stephen yes. from Boy Valley Farms. Thank you so much for being on with us. Oh, uh, thank you for being here. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. along, about, along with the physical effects for their vaccine, can you include the unconstitutionality and the illegalities of this as well, of the intrusion on our sovereignty, our ownership of our own body, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. our mm -hmm client our, our patient doctor confidentiality i don't want to just argue on the harmfulness of the vaccine i want to i i want to argue on that but i also want to remind our leaders that we didn't put them in power to take away our rights to decide right. on whether we're going to take a vaccine or whether our family's going to take a vaccine or not. Yeah. Yes. I can make sure to include that. I want to make it clear. This is personal for me. My sons, all three of my sons have per have received permanent lifetime medical exemptions and we had to leave our state because the state of California took them away. 
And I could not, I would have to have homeschooled my son for the next eight years. And he did not want that. And I did not want that. So we left. And now we're moving to North Carolina, but we're making a huge breakthrough out of it. We're getting six acres and a, and a three barns and a small pond. We're going to grow food and have animals and it's going to be fantastic. So, Mm. you know, so that, you know, hallelujah, hallelujah, right. But, uh, but I'm, I'm furious about what the, you know, about the entire circumstance because there are many people that cannot leave, right. And that cannot move and they're going to be forced to homeschool their kids. And I don't know how people do that on, uh, you know, with one with single moms, I don't, I don't know how that's possible. It's just not possible. So they're going to be, you know, they're going to need to be, they're going to need to vaccinate their children and um, the effects are going to be extremely harmful. So yes, our, our bodily uh, sovereignty is being violated when they insist on this. So, okay. So we, we, I want to move on though, um, because we have special guest, Dr. Eric Plasker. He's been a chiropractor and practicing for over 35 years. His, uh, his company is a hundred year lifestyle. His education uh, platform is a hundred year lifestyle. He's educated thousands of chiropractors. And I just had the privilege of seeing him at Life University, which is the la- largest chiropractor college uh, in the country, speaking in front of hundreds of potential uh, you know, future chiropractors. And I was so inspired because there were, me- there were just as many females as males there. It was completely diverse. There were, you know, young people, middle-aged people, all kinds of people there fired up to take care of people and offer people a new pathway to health that does not include toxic drugs with side effects. So I'm just so excited about our new partnership with Dr. Plasker because it's so in alignment with what we believe, which is empowering you to take care of your health in a way that is not going to give you harmful side effects. That's not going to make you dependent on drugs. That's not gonna make you part of this toxic system that's perpetuated by big ag and big pharma and you know, all of these, these toxic systems. And so Dr. Plasker is going to share with us a little bit more unless you wanna add in more on your, about your, your bio and your background, um, Dr. Plasker, but we really would like you to share about two things on this call. One is immunity and the next one is our, the bonus one which is constipation <laughs> and because you just have so many good stories about that. So could you please start off with how does chiropractic care boost our immunity? Cause we wouldn't normally think of that in, as the first thing, right? We think of aches and pains and our muscles and our back and all those problems. So why does it support immunity? Great question. And before I get into that, let me just say, uh, you know, some of our people have joined our call, some of our doctors and Ron Hosek, I see him as smiling face. We've done some research together. He's a, a lead researcher at Life University. And uh, we did a study together, first phase of the study on the benefits of people that were under long-term chiropractic care. And we uh, showed signs that those people do not decline with age. And we're just about to launch, I guess, I think you're putting some of those uh, details together from the second study that we did together, Ron, which we're excited about that. So, uh, right. uh, you know, at some point down the road, we'll have uh, maybe Ron speak up about some of those things. And so, Ron, thank you for joining us, my friend. And uh, I see Janet uh, Kuehl from Iowa, great chiropractor there, been in practice, uh, probably approaching 30 years, married to Jean Kressinger, been in practice over 50 years or 50 years. And uh, these are leaders, they're warriors. And just like all of you, and you know what I was, why I was attracted to Moms Across America was absolutely because of the warriorship of what you're doing, Zen. And you know, we, it's a time where we all need to be that person. Uh, you know, we we can't sit back. The people that you're talking about that are having to move or being faced with really serious decisions about what they're going to do with their family. I have my oldest son just got married and. I know that they're thinking about starting a family there in Oregon and, you know, we don't like what's going on over there and where that's going to go. And, you know, I was very fortunate to have an education early on about the immune system and chiropractic. And really it's not just the immune system and chiropractic you ready. I mean, it's that the immune system is a natural thing. Like it's supposed to work. <laughs> it's supposed to resist all the boogers that are out there in the world, the bacteria and the viruses and, and it does do that as long as there's no interference. There's a great article on 100yearlifestyle.com, which is our platform, like Sam was talking about, where we are very committed to educating people, parents, 
moms, dads, kids, families, everybody in between about how to keep themselves healthy. And there's an article there called The Interference Principle where it talks about how the body has an innate intelligence that it knows what to do and built into that innate intelligence is an immune system. It's got a natural immunity. It's got adaptive immunity. It builds antibodies. It gets exposed. Thank you. Uh, it, it, uh, it does its job. And that's why, and I, I joked about this the other night at that lecture that I gave at Life University about how, you know, a few years ago, maybe a long time ago, there were two people on the planet, Adam and Eve, and now we have 7.8 billion people on the planet. And back then when we had two people, there were trillions of bacteria and trillions of viruses also on the planet. And now we have 7.8 billion billion times as many trillions of bacteria on the planet. I don't know how many zeros that would be if you actually tried to draw it out in a number. But you know, my point being is, is that if bacteria and viruses were the problem, we'd all be dead by now. And so what is important is to, I think really important is I learned early on that we should not be afraid of those things, that we should learn to live in harmony with those things by keeping our immune system strong, keeping ourselves less vulnerable, by taking care of our bodies, taking care of our minds in a way that's healthy. We'll talk about that as time goes on and keeping the interference out of the way. So we know that if our body's designed to be healthy and we have this innate intelligence that's, and, and let me talk a little bit more about our body's innate intelligence, because I think it's important that if you understand and respect and honor the innate intelligence of your body, you will make choices that are different today than maybe you did yesterday. Uh, a couple of examples, as you and I are on the phone right now, if you ate dinner just a couple of hours ago, your body's digesting that food and we can have a conversation and you don't have to think about the digestion because we have an innate intelligence. Your nervous system, you know, you eat the food, you have expansion of your gut. And when you have expansion of your gut, it sends a signal to your brain, which says, hey, there's something in the gut that needs to be digested. Your body sends a signal back down over your nervous system to your stomach, tells your stomach, hey, acid time and it secretes the acid, it breaks down the food, it distributes the food and it breaks it down into its smallest parts. And then it's got uh, those uh, nutrients that are circulating throughout the body and the cells take in what the body needs, what the cells need to get rid of the waste products. And all of this happens while you are on the phone, while you and I are on the phone because you have an innate intelligence. And so the same is true with oxygen. You breathe in oxygen. Even if you're sick, your innate intelligence is working to keep you healthy. Even if you have been immune compromised at some point in your life by some type of interference, which we'll talk about as I proceed here, you're still alive. You're still breathing. Uh, you're not dead yet, thank God, because your body is adapting. It's finding ways. Your innate intelligence is always trying to keep you alive and keep you functioning at the highest level, even in spite of the challenges that many of us have had along the way, which we are very compassionate about. So we have this innate intelligence. Uh, Zen mentioned constipation or elimination of waste. Well, if you have a, you take in all this food, if you didn't get rid of it through your colon and your rectum and your bowel, then you would just continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger until you exploded. So thank God we have the ability to get rid of all those waste products. Uh, and so that elimination, function of your innate intelligence. It's controlled by your nervous system. Everything is controlled by your nervous system, your heart, lungs, liver, kidney, stomach, all of those things. But there can be interference. And that interference uh, can happen. And there's three types of interference, three main types of interference. Uh, one of them is nerve interference. A second one is lifestyle interference. And a third one is environmental interference, which what one of the reasons why we have a strong partnership that is going to continue to grow. And this is just the first call, by the way, we are going to talk about these things once a month, the third Monday of each month. Is that right? Zen is that's on the schedule and we'll explore a lot yes. of these things. And we want you to invite your friends. We want you to invite family members. We want you to invite coworkers so we can all together make ourselves stronger while at the same time, we eliminate interference from our bodies so we can be stronger immune wise. And while Zen and our friends at Moms Across America are so strong in the environmental space to be able to help us understand how we can eliminate environmental interference and keep it out of our lives because that is one of the interferences that gets in the way of us expressing the health that we are destined to be able to express. So 
Uh, and I use this principle, this interference principle. It's one of the principles that we learned early on in chiropractic college at Life University, which let me just also tell you that not all chiropractic colleges are alike. Uh, they teach different things. So at Life University, the principles that we learn are very much aligned with the core principles when chiropractic was founded in 1895, trusting the body's ability to heal itself. And so when we look at interference, this environmental interference, like for example, we know that glyphosate is toxic to the body. It's been proven. It causes cells to mutate. It causes cancerous cells. It causes the body's immune system to react that uh, are create stress within the body because it creates a lot of, uh, Carla Davis to me, well done today. <laughs> Thank you, Carla, appreciate it. Um, so this environmental, these environmental toxins, they cause reactions in our body that keep our body distracted from doing the things that keep us healthy from high level functioning. And they interfere with, uh, and they distract our nervous system to have to do other things other than keeping us functioning at a very high level. So we want to eliminate all of this environmental interference. And we know that this interference that from glyphosate, from 5G that you're talking about, Zen, is something that we do need to address out in the world because yeah. it does harm our body and keeps our bodies from functioning the way that they're supposed to. So that's one type of interference. Another type of interference, which I really should have been what I talked about first, is nerve interference. Now, nerve interference is important to understand because your nervous system controls and coordinates the function of every cell, tissue, and organ of your body. Everything is controlled by your nervous system. You live your life through your nervous system. You know, it's interesting. People think we see with our eyes. Well, our, we actually see with our brains. Our eyes are just the lens, but our brain interprets what we're seeing. We see, we hear with our ears, yes. We really hear with our brains. And so the brain communicates with the body so that our body knows what to do and so that it can respond appropriately to the things that are going on in the environment. Well, from a chiropractic perspective, we focus on removing nerve interference, eliminating nerve interference so the nervous system can work the way that it's supposed to. Uh, we did a podcast. This is very important. If you haven't listened to our podcast, you should go to our podcast. We just, one of the more recent ones that we did, it was with a woman who had a, took her son in for a vaccination and within 48 hours became autistic, uh, severely autistic. Well, that was a severe neurological interference and it happened within 48 hours. They're fighting like hell to get this child back. The chiropractic care that this child is receiving now, which you'll hear it in the podcast is helping this child function better again, helping restore the balance and the function to the nervous system so that this child can have the best chance to heal. Well, that nervous system insult that happened from that interference was an environmental interference. It could be called a lifestyle interference. It was a choice. It was a choice that the family made that they were gonna have this vaccine. They had the vaccine and then this horrible situation occurred. Well, um, we see in families that the nervous system to keep it healthy is so important from the time you're born. People don't realize that the nervous system is very commonly injured through the birth process. Um, the pulling and twisting on the neck interferes with the communication between the brain and the body. It's called a vertebral subluxation when that happens. Uh, it can happen in any area of the spine. There are 26 movable segments in the spine. Any one of them can be injured and can cause this type of an interference between the brain and the body body. And so when that happens, it can lead to all types of health problems. But here's the other part when it comes to nerve interference that is different than I believe that most people understand about utilizing chiropractic care. Most people misuse it. And what do I mean by that is that in its truest sense, chiropractors don't treat symptoms. I'll give you a great example. I don't know if you've ever met this incredible woman, her name is Zen Honeycutt, who just drove across the country to, uh, <laughs> to uh, move across and get away from a lot of this environmental interference. And she came into the office and uh, she was telling me about all this pain in her shoulders that she had nine shots in her shoulder. And she uh, think that one of the shots or maybe some of those shots caused a reaction in 
other shoulder. And so I asked her to raise her arms up because she said she couldn't raise her arms up. And, you know, tell me, I don't know if I'm telling the story exactly correct, Zen, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, but I said, raise your arms up, Zen. And she went like this and she said, I am. I said, raise them <laughs> higher. And she said, I am. I mean, she literally could not raise her arms and she adjustments in 72 hours. And then I said, raise your arms up and she's doing this. And I did not touch her shoulders. Yeah, I didn't even examine idea. her shoulders and I wasn't treating her shoulders. I wasn't treating the symptoms. What I did do was, in fact, Dr. Stu Katzen's on the line from South Carolina, Greenville, South Carolina. He's giving us a thumbs up. He was there for the Do you remember Stu? Zen, he was mm -hmm. our office. Yes, uh, I and, uh, Yeah, I was there. Yeah, I was there. And so, you know, it was, it was interesting because we did not even touch her shoulders. And then asked me to talk about this case of a baby that had constipation, hadn't had a bowel movement in eight days. Well, this baby got uh, after adjustment, literally all the crap that had built up for eight days was eliminated from this child within 24 hours, as exemplified by the text message that I received from the dad the next day that said, holy crap, Dr. Plasker, no kidding, because there was literally this explosion out of this baby's body in a good way, a healthy way. And what is important for us to understand is the things that we feel when there's nerve interference. There are so many other things that we don't feel when there's nerve interference because the nerves that go to the shoulders also go to the heart. They also go to the lungs. They also go to the throat. They also go to the esophagus, depending on where it is in the nerve. They could affect the diaphragm. They can, so many different things become affected. And even there's been a lot of research that has come out that says nerve uh, interference or nerve compression can exist without pain. Mm -hmm. And so because over the last 30, 40 years in a, as a way to maybe get people to understand why they should go to a chiropractor today, many chiropractors will use pain and symptoms as a reason to get you to see that you have a crisis that needs to be addressed that could be related to the nervous system. But Quite honestly, that's never the way that we did it in the world of the 100-year lifestyle for 35 years in practice. Uh, we talked always about function of the nervous system and checking babies and checking kids and checking families to make sure that the nervous system was working the way that it was supposed to, because that is a vital, it's a necessity if people are going to grow healthy and they're going to age properly. And Zen and I did a uh, video, which I think uh, Zen said that they were going to put it up on their website. It's actually on 100yearlifestyle.com now. It's on our homepage there. If you go there, you can watch this video where we talked about how deterioration happens in the spine and how when it does happen in the spine, it has nothing to do with age. And you could see in this particular x-ray that I show on this video, you can see how you could have three people that are exactly the same age and all the bones within those people are exactly the same age but the degeneration and how it wears down over time and the way that it nerves very different based on where the interference is and how the interference affecting that particular person. And so I think it's important that from a health longevity perspective and raising healthy families perspective, that parents not just treat symptoms, that you understand that a neurological checkup and a nervous system checkup chiropractically is vital and then the other piece of it is going from crisis care to lifestyle care, keeping it out of your life throughout your lifetime. And then I'm going to get to lifestyle interference. Go ahead, Zen. You had a question. Okay. Yeah, well, so I just want to add in that when I went on the tour at uh, Life University, one of the uh, doctors was in the room where instead of cadavers, they have a virtual bodies, right? Where you could like look through the slices and the skin and the muscle. It was like fascinating. And he was saying that... Um, the interference that you're talking about on a nerve can be as much as the weight of a dime. So very small amount of interference can actually completely disrupt the ability for that nerve to tell your, you know, your organs or your, your bowels to do its job. And I don't know about you, but it doesn't take the weight of a dime of some sort of pressure for me in the past to go to a chiropractor because that didn't, that wasn't very uncomfortable, right? It would take extreme pain for me to actually interrupt my habit and my lifestyle. And yeah, get for my, most people, and it's get my butt to, yeah, to, people, a, to a, a chiropractor. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what I told you when I walked in. My lower back 
felt like I cement had been poured into it, right? Because I was driving cross country. I had been lifting things. I was in pain the entire like 40 hours driving cross country. And within a couple of adjustments, now I'm sitting now, there's no pain. So it, we, we can't wait until we're in extreme pain. And that's what he's talking about with crisis care. That's what I've been doing. I have been eating organic food. I've been not, you know, uh, uh, vaccinating. I've been, I've been doing things like wearing this hoodie to protect myself from 5G. Like when I have to wear a cell phone, uh, I mean, when I have to use a cell phone for more than 20 minutes, I get a headache. I have, I guess I'm developing electromagnetic sensitivity. So this has silver threads in it. So I'm doing what I can to protect myself. But if I don't, if I wait until I, it's a crisis situation to go get myself, my nervous system aligned, then I'm going to keep having crisis after crisis. And that's what the light bulb went off for me when he talked about lifestyle. Oh, he means consistent care, like going even when you don't have pain. And that means the um, elimination of tens of thousands of dollars of medical care office visits in my, in most likely, right? In most people's cases, because your body is then able to function properly and to tell the organs and everything to do the job it's supposed to do. And I know from, from experience every day seeing on Facebook that the parents against Miralox, they are seeing, um, there, I mean, I'm seeing over and over again, parents giving their children Miralax and all kinds of drugs and toxic chemicals because of this elimination problem, uh, which I think is impacted by environmental reasons. So if they just eliminated those, they might be able to do that. But most of them don't eliminate those environmental factors. They don't go 100% organic. They don't eliminate all the wheat. They don't, you know, they have all these to this toxins built up. So they need chiropractic care. And that's why I'm excited to have this call to, to start talking more about that consistent care of ch chiropractic care as a lifestyle. So you know, I, I had to had interject. A, mm -hmm. I had a doctor once tell me, and you're going to love this, that it was completely normal to have a bowel movement every four to five days. <laughs> I was, and I, and I knew a lot at the time. So I just, I just looked at him and went, yeah, that's no, that's 20, not 20 meals. Yeah, that's yeah. that is not normal. I think I think that's very crappy advice, personally. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I second that. Um, um, you know, okay, keep what, going, what Dr. Plasker. I think what thank you, Zen, and yeah, well said. And you know what is important that uh, so you have the environmental interference, you have the nerve interference. Uh, it can happen from concussions. It, it could happen from head trauma. It could happen from whiplashes, the birth process, learning to walk as a child, sports injuries. These are all things that can affect the nervous system. So you have the, these, uh, this nerve interference, and then there's lifestyle interference that does happen from sports injuries and things that you do on the outside and habits that you have that affect your nervous system. Now, here's the issue that is very, very important to go along with what you just said, Zen, is that Nerve interference specifically affects the nervous system, which can cause all kinds of dysfunction and can cause all kinds of problems that you can be asymptomatic for decades and then all of a sudden wake up one day and have any type of condition you could name. We've seen it all. In fact, I think there's, we have affiliate websites, our 100 Year Lifestyle providers in our network around the country. And I think it's also on 100yearlifestyle.com, uh, an article on why medical conditions respond or explaining unexplainable health problems. Because when by not treating symptoms, what is amazing, like I didn't treat, for example, Zen shoulders, and I didn't treat that baby's constipation. We look for the interferences to see if we could get the body to do its job. And so when you have a very strong immune system and you have a very highly functioning nervous system, your body becomes resistant to everything more resistant to everything. Um, we joke around, we have patients that joke around all the time. They'll come in and say, well, Dr. Plasker, you fixed my bed. What do you mean? What do you mean I fixed your bed? Because I used to not be able to sleep. I thought it was my bed. And now that my nervous system's working right, my bed is fine. Well, you know what, Dr. Plasker, I was just about to go out and get a new car. You know, you fixed my car seat, Dr. Plasker, and two cats fixed my car seat, man. Uh, well, how did you do that? Well you know, you corrected things within the body and the body was able to adapt. And so we see so many people that they'll go and they'll get medication for this and medication for that. And, you know, we have a severe issue of polypharmacy in this country. I think it's something like 17 billion prescriptions were written in, uh, in 2018. What a crazy, no, excuse me, it was 
like, I think it was maybe 5 billion prescriptions in 2018. We have 300 million people and I didn't take any of those prescriptions. I know Dr. Katzen didn't take any of those. I don't think Dr. Janet Kuehl from Iowa took any of those and many of our other doctors and a lot of our patients and a lot of our families we're not taking any of those, which means that the number of prescriptions that are being taken by every, everybody else, on average 17 prescriptions per person is more like 30 prescriptions per person. He froze up for a moment, but I can attest to that. My father had 17 prescriptions when he came to me at 91 years old after a uh, vaccine reaction. He, he was, he was, uh, pretty much fit as a fiddle before that. He only had uh, old folks uh, sort of symptoms, you know, bad eyes, bad ears, bad knees, no organ damage at all. Got two vaccines, the, the high dose flu shot and the DTaP shot because he fell after the high dose flu shot. I think he got dizzy from it. And then he got the DTaP because he skinned his arm and they thought, oh, he's gonna get tetanus, right? Totally ridiculous. And within, um, within two months, he had emphysema, COPD, chronic kidney disease, liver disease, congestive heart failure, and he had to get open heart surgery at 91 years old. And they, within a few months, he was on 17 different prescriptions. So we got him down to two and a half within a couple of months of being living with us and eating organic food. But those, that, that is a, uh, yeah, Dr. Plasker, I was just confirming your 17 prescriptions things. I don't, that's what my dad was on, but you're muted. You got to unmute yourself. Sorry. When you come back in, you're muted. So, so yeah, so I appreciate you filling yep. in the gap there. And that, that, is, that is true for so many people. And the challenge that we see in kids raising families, and this is why so many moms need to understand the importance of this, is that a lot of these kids, they're getting on one or two or three medications, and maybe it's to help them have better attention, or maybe it's to help them focus, or maybe it's to help them with the bowels, or maybe it's to help them with, uh, you know, chronic infections. And the challenge of that is, is that as time goes on, they become a victim of polypharmacy at a very early age. And then they look to drugs for answers constantly. And it is true. And we did a, a, a great seminar on it, on becoming a least vulnerable person. If you send us an email at support at 100yearlifestyle.com, we'll give you access to this, uh, this video that we did on becoming a least vulnerable person. And what we see is, is that it, this polypharmacy makes you more vulnerable. Uh, and there are other things that make you more vulnerable. And vulnerability is a function of your immune system, how well your immune system can adapt to the environment, how well it can recognize things in the environment. We've learned and we did a, uh, uh, some great videos with different uh, speakers, leaders, scientists on vulnerability on the immune system. And we know that when you get vaccines, that it bypasses the body's innate immunity, it gets right to a, goes right to the adaptive immunity system. And when it does that, the adaptive immunity system uh, fires uncontrollably, it creates an autoimmune response, and then you become more vulnerable. And so, you know, it's, it's scary that there are mandates that they're looking to bring in on vaccines that yeah. have never really been tested. Oh, shoot, he froze up. Okay. But I want to. I want to ask. Well, I guess we'll get to that. I want to ask why. Work. They should check every child oh, before and yeah, after. There he is. Okay. You you froze up for a second, Doctor uh, Plasker. But I want to ask why does chiropractic care specifically help the immune system? What is, is the nerves going to where? What's going on? Why? Yeah, the nerves. The nerves control the immune system. There were studies done in the in the eighties where they first found the connection, where they, uh, they were just doing some research and they were looking in these cells and they found immune system cells, nerve endings that were going into immune system cells. And what they realized was, is that when they took the nerve cell away from the immune cell, the immune immune system stopped in its tracks. It literally, there's a relationship. In fact, Ron, he may want to chime in because he's the, he's the super scientist over here and the researcher. So feel free to chime in uh, if you want to, Ron. But the nervous system controls the immune system in so many ways. And so what we have to do is we have to make sure that the nervous system is working properly. The chiropractors, we address it through the spine. We can address it through also nutrition and cleansing and Things yeah, because like we're, we're we've been saying and we've been taught that 70% of the immune system is in the gut and in the microbiome. 
So do the nerves support the gut and the microbiome and the digestion? Is that connected to the constipation? If, is their immune system not working properly if they're constipated? Like how, how, if the nerves control the immune system, how, what's the role of the gut and the microbiome? Well, the nerves control the gut. Okay. The nerves control the, the nerves. They feed the stomach. They feed the intestines. They help maintain the balance. They secrete acid in the appropriate amounts. They uh, secrete, uh, there's alkaline, hopefully in the appropriate amounts. All of that regulation is controlled by the nervous system. And when the nervous system is working right, the body has the capability to provide the right kind of environment in the gut to create healthy immunity within the gut. So there is, there's the microbiome, there's the virome, uh, there's also the, and there's the, the neural component of the immune system, which is vital because it keeps everything interconnected. Ron, chime in if you yeah, want. Yeah, there's, there's one thing you might want to add to that, Eric, and that is that one of the reasons why the gut has been implicated like that is that uh, a very, very large percentage of the things that come into your body come in through that channel. We certainly take things in, you know, by way of respiration and there's immune activity also in the lungs, but in the gut, uh, we take in all kinds of things. As we know, there are environmental toxins that come in that way too, but that gives the body a chance to take a look at what's coming in and to sort it and to react to it right away. So those cells that are in there are there for a purpose, and that is to make sure that those things don't get too far into the body. And, uh, you know, the immune system, you know, works to the bloodstream as well, but the uh, everything that's in the gut eventually gets digested and goes into the bloodstream and gets circulated. And some of it's stored, some of it's eliminated, but that's the best place to get at it right at the beginning. Right, and I'm, th I'm thinking that because our gut is being destroyed by these environmental factors like glyphosate and antibiotics, and we have this leaky gut and food particles coming out, causing inflammation, our body thinking that it's a foreign invader and attacking it and causing all kinds of allergies, that that inflammation could I'm just wondering, could that be causing nerve damage as well? Like is inflammation, is the gut swell, does the, int the intestine swell, can that be impacting the communication between the nerves and, you know, impacting, you know, the moving of the vowels and the immune system as well? Could that be a factor, inflammation? Uh, absolutely. And, you know, the other thing that I think is important is a, a very simple analogy that we use. Uh, we call it the safety pin cycle, where you have brain cell, tissue cell, tissue cell, brain cell, and there's a loop of communication that goes back and forth. So if the patient is off or interfered with, not functioning properly, then the signal from the brain to the body is not good. The sensory input from the body to the brain is not what it's supposed to be. And so you end up with this loop of poor reactions because dysfunction or injury or gut problems or inflammation. And so that loop, the idea for an, a healthy immune system is to keep it clean all the way from top to bottom and bottom to top. And so, you know, it's not just working on the gut, it's also working on the nervous system. And we have people, I know Stu probably can vouch for this. We see people that have, they've been on so many different cleanses and they've tried everything and, you know, they start to get adjusted. The nervous system starts to work properly. And then all of a sudden things clear up. And then we also see it the other way where we have people where we're, we're adjusting them and working to clear out the nervous system. And we realize, you know what, you need to cleanse. You need to cleanse out your system. You need to restore the health of your gut. So yes, it does go both ways. And the challenge that we see in adults, because they've had decades of this miscommunication and misinformation, the reversal process of a lot of these conditions, it does take time. That's why the transition, we call it a critical transition from crisis care to lifestyle, lifestyle care. Because people that live from crisis to crisis to crisis never get over the hump. They never really experience what health is supposed to be like. And lifestyle care is keeping yourself functioning in a very high level. And it is a very critical transition to go from crisis care to lifestyle care. Um, when you do that, you give the body, body an opportunity to correct itself and regenerate and heal. And you know, we've always said, and we, and we talk about this a lot in, in, in really everything that we do, that as long as you're alive and breathing and there's life flowing over your nervous system, it's worth a shot, you're worth a shot, but you have to give it a chance to heal. Too many people, they feel better, they judge their overall health by their feelings instead of judging their health by how they're functioning. And so they feel better in the moment for a day or a week and then they don't come back again until they feel it again. 
And in between going from feeling it, feeling better and feeling it again, their body has continued to decay and deteriorate along the way because yeah. they've never done things to get over the hump. I'll give you another example, simple example, and just in the area of weight loss. You know, people, they have a crisis, their clothes don't fit and they have a wedding coming up. So they go on a diet, they lose the weight, their dress fits, their pants fit, they feel better and the wedding's over and then they start going back to the habits that made them unhealthy and heavier in the first place. And so they're on a roller coaster ride, which is not good for their overall health on, in, in any way, shape or form. And so that critical transition from crisis care to lifestyle care, it's really true in everything related to health. So, you know, one of my favorite expressions in the 100 year lifestyle is learn to love the things that are good for you and make them your new lifestyle. You know, with Halloween coming up, it is definitely true that the treats in the world are really tricks to the body. Yeah. The uh, treats I, the, are yeah, really tricks. I tell our moms that we need to start looking at those treats as threats yeah. to our children's <laughs> uh, immune system and to their ability to heal. And, and we really do need to go cold turkey 100% if you are dealing with chronic illness and behavioral and learning issues. I mean, it, you, you just, you can't do 80, 20. You've got to cleanse the system out completely. Eventually later on, you know, maybe a year down the road, you know, you know, just like probably with chiropractic care, you get consistent care. And then after a year, then you can start, you know, whatever it is running again or doing triathlons again, it takes some time. But once you get back on track, then your body can function the way it, it normally does. And you can have them once in a while, but you do need to really take care of your body and do the, do the hard things in order to have a much easier life later on. Yeah. And uh, this, this this hour has flown by, by the way, and anybody yes. wants to stay to ask questions, I'm just putting that out there. Um, well, we did but, have a question from uh, Frankie. She was saying that she's really, she's seeing that the, the body and the nerves, it's like a wired telephone system and the signals to every cell or telephone wires to every house. And what she hasn't figured out is the role of hormones in this phone picture. Cause, and I know that a lot of the hormones are in the gut, like serotonin and melatonin and guarin that, that really are essential for the body. For instance, serotonin measures insulin, regulates insulin. So without a proper level of serotonin, we're developing diabetes like gangbusters in the United States. We're going to, our budget's going to go bankrupt from, from diabetes. And I know that glyphosate plays a big role in this, but how do hormones play a role with the nervous system and, and the way the body functions? Can you say a little bit about that? Yeah. So uh, the nervous system controls a lot hormone production, the amount of hormone production, nervous system controls a lot of that. And mm -hmm. so again, going back to what we talked about before about the neurology comes first, the nervous system, I think it's so important that people understand the role of the nervous system in so many of these things. I mean, we see people all the time, uh, women that have menstrual cramping, menstrual irregularity. We've had so many people, not just me, I'm talking about Dr. Stu, I know he's had it, I know Janet, uh, and there probably may be other chiropractors on the line that I don't know where we see women that couldn't get pregnant. They uh, get adjustments. They get their nervous system balanced out. And all of a sudden their hormones start working better. And all of a sudden they get pregnant and they'll blame the chiropractor and the chiropractor is like, no, 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 no. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I just fixed the nervous system. Uh, and we see, um, you know, women that have migraines during their menstrual cycle because of hormone imbalance. And we see uh, cramping, severe cramping and, and, very, very common, not by treating the hormone and hormone imbalance, but by balancing out the nervous system. Very often, it's very common that these things clear up. And so, you know, I really encourage, and here's another reason why I think it's important to, to put neurology first and the nervous system first. If you are treating symptoms of hormones, for example, if you have a certain balance in your hormones that are just because that's how you showed up today, and you go and you take a measurement of the hormones and your nervous system is not right. You're trying to balance out hormones that are in a, in a certain chemical balance based on dysfunction of the nervous system. Whereas if you cleared out the nervous system and the body was able to create some self-regulation, then you prescribe hormones if they're still needed mm -hmm. that are truly related to what the body is capable of doing from the perspective of having your particular hormonal system balance out. And I think that's really important because I'll give you an example. You brought up diabetes. 
the pancreas puts out insulin, certain amount of insulin. If you are taking, if you start to take insulin because your pancreas supposedly is not putting out what it's supposed to and your type two diabetes and your insulin levels are not what they're supposed to be. And you start taking insulin artificially too soon your body's gonna say, your pancreas is gonna say, you know what, I don't need to do any work here today because mm -hmm. there's insulin in the, there's already insulin there. So you become dependent when there may be a possibility where you don't need to be dependent. Well, well that's not, exactly what Big Pharma wants you to do. And by the way, insulin is GMO. I don't know if people, most people don't know that it's genetically modified. So yeah, but they want you to become dependent. Just the same thing with the thyroid medication. They want you to be on that cycle. 17 yeah. medications per person, billions of dollars a year. Yeah. You know, it's, mm -hmm. so yeah, I'm with you. And so, you know, I, I, I strongly suggest, and I, listen, I've been in practice for 35 years. Uh, I, I have tried to prove what we're talking about wrong for 35 years. Do know is that if you put the neurology first, like we're talking about here, you will save yourself so much in medical expenses. My family, I know you could say we're just blessed to be healthy, uh, that we're just lucky. We are not just lucky. We have chosen to live differently than the rest of the world. We have had, and I don't know the exact number, but maybe over the last 35 years in raising our kids between my wife and I and three kids, I'm gonna guess maybe, just maybe, maybe $15,000 of medical expenses, healthcare expenses, and that includes three childbirths and an accident that my child had. And uh, so, I mean, that's over 30 years, Over f that's five people. Yeah. Most um, people have 15,000 in one year. That's what we used to have, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. so, and, and I hear those numbers and I say, no wonder we have, no wonder everybody's going broke with healthcare expenses, but these are not healthcare expenses. These are crisis care expenses. Yeah. And so if you take a shift, you make that critical transition from crisis care to lifestyle care, you eat healthier foods, not because you need it because you got to fit into clothes, but you eat them as a part of a lifestyle. You get adjusted chiropractic care, checked consistently as a part of a lifestyle. You exercise not because you're trying to get in shape for something, but you exercise as a part of a lifestyle. You bring in positive thoughts into your world as a part of a lifestyle. You change your lifestyle. That's what the 100 year lifestyle really is all about. It's really all about change. Uh, our podcasts are great, by the way. We have so many podcasts on change, mastering personal change. But I got to tell you, if you just keep living to Christ from crisis to crisis to crisis, I could tell you where you're going to end up. You're going to end up probably in one of those assisted living centers. You'll be a burden to your family. You'll be a burden to your kids. You'll be a burden to your grandkids because you'll be rotting away and decaying in a nursing home somewhere because you didn't take care of yourself properly all along the way. And that's... Uh, you know, that's not true for everybody, but it is true for a lot of people and anybody can change. Anybody can change. I actually had a conversation with somebody earlier today who uh, is a, a, an life seven or eight years ago and just out of the blue called me because he needed some support because he, he was about to, uh, he was about to give in. And he said, you know what? He got back on track with his choice. Dr. Prasker, your sound has been, okay, wait, can you try again? It was really Looks loud. Looks like it throws up again. Are you there? Yeah. Your sound is really loud right now. Did you change any type of setting? Probably the internet. I'm going to do Okay, this. that's better. That's better. Okay. Yeah. I didn't even do anything. I just. Okay, that's better. Yep, that's good. Okay. So uh, the next time we're together, I'll do it from my office with it, where it's a better internet, even though it's supposed to be great where I am here at home. Okay. Okay, um, good. Well, I, I want to mention before we go, we just, we've got to wrap it up in a minute too, but you, you told me about this great book that I'm reading now called how to raise a healthy child in spite of your doctor. I love this title by Robert Mendelson. And on the back, it says mothers, grandmothers, and mother nature are the best doctors around. So I just, I love your support and uh, belief and, you know, his and your uh, belief in mothers and grandmothers and mother nature and the innate healing that we have. My mother always said that we have an, an innate healing. Our body knows what to do if we just let it do what it, let it do what it's supposed to do. And that's what uh, chiropractic care does as well as eating organic food, of course, and uh, preventing as much of those environmental impacts as we can. And, um, and so Anne just put on uh, the smile.amazon.com, raise healthy children uh, despite your doctor, in spite of your doctor. 
And by the way, she's got smile on there because a, a portion of the proceeds goes to Moms Across America. So we hope you'll do that on Amazon as well and support Moms Across America. Go to momsacrossamerica.org and share uh, Dr. Plasker's blogs and articles uh, from our website as well and our, our, our newsletter. And every Monday, if you sign up for our newsletter, you'll get an invitation to this uh, Monday night call as long as as long as we're doing it, I'm sorry, because of the move, it, I can't guarantee we'll be doing this next Monday. I'm not sure we'll have an internet connection. We'll be in our house, but I'm not sure we'll have an internet connection, but I will send out an, a notification either way, whether we're having it or not next Monday. Um, but definitely the third Monday of every month we'll be on again with Dr. Eric Plasker. Anything you want to say to, uh, to tie up this call, Dr. Plasker? Well, I, I'd actually like to ask him, is the sure. podcast you were talking about earlier um, called, titled Mom of Autistic Child Speaks Out? Yes. Okay, I will post that here for everybody that they can go and listen to it. Yeah, there's yes. another one early on, one of the, uh, in the beginning, like, I don't know, maybe it's the, within the first five, it's called We Are Not Just Lucky, and it's an interview with a couple of parents, similar conversation that we're having here today. And, uh, and you know, we have, we talked a lot about the nervous system and neuroplasticity as a, a function of the nervous system. Uh, there is, a, if you go to 100yearlifestyle.com, and you just click around for a bit, you'll see a pop-up that asks you if you want a free download of this transcript on the podcast we did with Dr. Stephanie Sullivan on neuroplasticity. And uh, it's fantastic. It's a great, that's another great podcast to listen to, but we've also made it into an ebook. And we'll also give you a free copy of the 100 Year Lifestyle second edition in an ebook format if you want to as well. So, and that's free. We just want to get the word out there. And I would love to see us explode this Monday night call with moms mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yes, to have absolutely. questions. Moms across America, we're going to try and get our doctors bringing their patients in there and each community there. And I know Zen's going to do the same thing. We have a lot to talk about. We barely scratched the surface tonight. We'll have special guests like Dr. Katzen on and maybe Dr. Janet uh, Kuehl on. And we have so many other great moms and people that have lived this life that we're talking about raising healthy families without shots, without drugs, without pediatricians, not being bullied. And we need to band together before the yeah. mandates kick in and even after the mandates kick in, because yes. uh, you know that's just not acceptable as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and, and what you just said is a whole shift in the paradigm without shots, without drugs, right? Without harmful side effects, without vaccines. That is a tall order. So we do need to come together. We do need to share this information, this will be on our website on momsacrossamerica.org under uh, connect and the moms connect calls. You'll be able to find this uh, interview there. And John Stephen, did you have a question? A statement, we yes. need to stop the mandates before they're mandated. Yes, we do. We need to get on it right away. We are going to do you. a campaign about it. Um, and, and like I said, if you go to our website, momsacrossamerica.org and the, you look at the letter to Professor Hotez, You've got 13 reasons right there uh, why we should stop these mandates. And you feel free to copy and paste and use that wherever you want to. A letter to your senator, your representative, your governors, your governors, especially right now. It's very, very important. And if we can, yeah. we'll put that um, on our mm -hmm. site. And if you want to, um, I guess uh, I'll get Erica to go ahead and also put that up on 100 Year Lifestyle. Well, back there yeah, and we'll be there. doing a specific campaign just to the governors about that. We just, I'm, we just need to get it together. We are having a tough time getting the emails of the governors because they like, they want you to go to your their contact page, but we have to have with our technology the actual an actual email to the governor. So it's taken a little research time on that. Uh, we do have some of them, but not all of them. So we'll get that out as soon as we can. We're hoping for early next week. Awesome. On that, yeah. So thank you everybody for being on the call. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Plasker and Ron and uh, Dr. Stu and Janet and everybody, all our moms that uh, joined the call. I'm sure there'll be many more moms that'll see this on our website, momsacrossamerica.org. And we will um, also be sharing clips of it on social media as well. Uh, for those of you who haven't been with us before, Moms Across America has had over 600 leaders that have caused over a thousand events in all 50 states. We reach anywhere between one in four people a month on social media, sorry, one in four million a month on social media. And, um, and we've talked uh, in maybe 10 countries around the world and been probably in 11 or 12 different movies by now. So we have a decent reach. They're, they're not on the call tonight, but more and more, pe more, and more people <laughs> will see this information. And we thank you all for being a part of it. Awesome. Thank you yeah. so much, Zen. Thank, thank you very you, much, Jen. everybody. Thank you, Dr. Plaster. 
Thank you, everybody. Appreciate Thank you. what you're saying, John. I'm with, we're on your side. Yes, absolutely. John, I'll, I'll, send you that, I'll, send, I'll send you that campaign, you and Susie, before it goes out so you can weigh in, okay? <clears throat> All right. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.